We all know that data is everything in the cattle game, never more than when you've got a dry year like we do here in southern New South Wales at the moment. I'm just outside of Holbrook and I'm talking to Lockie Snow today about some feedlot technology that's been brought to his paddock that is allowing him to keep an eye on his tight feed budget, monitor his cattle daily and reduce the number of times he's got to take them through the yards to get within 5% of his aim for the feedlot. <laughs> Lockie, how are you mate? Yeah, well Tim, how are you? Mate, thanks so much for having us out here. Yeah, no worries at all. Tell me a little bit about where we are, size of your property, what you do, what your operation is. Uh, so we, we're at Woomargama, just south of Holbrook, southern New South Wales. Yep. Um, we run a cattle trading operation and cropping operation. Our cropping operation sort of fits in very well with our cattle trading. So we grow mm -hmm. all grazing crops and everything, just trying to finish cattle into the feedlots. We trade anywhere from two to 3,000 steers a year. And yeah, a lot of it is we're finishing off our crops or finishing off in the spring off our pastures. So you're buying in at around about 350 and yep. selling at what, about 500 selling, or so? Selling just depending which market we're going. If we're going into the feedlot market, we sort of try and aim to average the steers between 450 to 500. Any of our bigger cattle we take through to kill and they predominantly sort of go down to Melbourne and yep. are killed down there. Now you are a very precise practitioner and you've got some tips that we're going to go into later on so people have got to stick around into how to split herds and everything else without destroying your numbers yep. so people can hang on for that information but in the meantime what on earth is this thing? This is what this is the Gallagher Strongbow Auto Wire. Okay. Um, machine to throw out in the paddock it's got an NLIS scanner in it. Right. You put uh, some sort of lick. At the moment, we've got just a molasses salt lick block with a bit of molasses and salt in the tub. Yep. And that attracts the animals to come on. So instead of putting your lick out on the ground, you put it into this machine. Put it into this machine. Do the cattle stay away from it, or do they? They, they did they at get the used start, but once they get used to it, um, it is does take a little bit of training. Yeah. Um, I would always advise putting a bit of lick out before. To the next mob or next paddock you're going to put put it out to right so get them accustomed to get the lick get them to coming lick, to it and then and then once you move this in remove those lick blocks and their only source of the lick is in in this machine and that just brings them to the machine well that's how you use it Lockie. how does it work so it works it works off cellular and satellite okay so um, it's connected so either to your cell phone or satellite yep. cell phone towers or satellite this is the aerial yep and so what happens is you've loaded your lick up and everything. Okay, so there's a lick block in here. Lick block yep. in here to attract your animal in. Yep. Once the animal walks onto the platform here, yep. it only needs two, two of their feet on the, on the platform. So on so the cow, so this is the front half of the cow, the back half of the cow is off the platform. Off the platform. But it's got an algorithm in here that it's somehow figures out how much that means. That's correct. Yep. Right. So once the animal puts its head down, yeah, and straight onto the lick block. That's okay, it. so what's happening to me now, yeah, mate? It's the, this panel reader here yeah. is scanning the NIS tag. So I've got a tag in my ear yep. that's being read by the panel and that's being sent to the satellite along with my weight. That's it. And how often does that happen? That it, Just depending on the animal, um, with all the new data that they've put together. Yep. Originally we weren't able to work, they didn't have that, but now you can. Yep. You can see how many times that animal will go on each day. Right. And you can keep a, a, an a accurate record of what that animal's doing and how many how often it's coming on. So in percentage terms, uh, so it, it, it'd take a couple of weeks to get your numbers right, so I imagine. So two weeks. I have work on anywhere from 12 to 14 days. So you leave this in the paddock for 12, 14 days, ignore the data until then, until and by then. then it'll be accurate. And then by then, I am very confident it is within 2 to 3%. Yep. Yep of the animals going onto it and what their actual weight is. And if you're moving the animals, as long as it's with the same mob, it'll still only take 12 to 14 days, even though you're moving paddocks. Even if we're moving paddocks, it'll just continue on. Right. So it doesn't have to take, so. So you keep this strongbow with that mob. With that mob. And you've got contiguous data, yep. even though you might be moving them every couple of days. Yeah, that's it. If you want to just do it for that 14 days, so you're just trying to get a bit of an average. Yeah. Of what your paddocks are doing, whether you're on a grazing crop or you're on a pasture or something like that. Yep. All you have to do is push a button in behind. Yep. And that'll reset, the, reset that mob. 
Yeah, so once right you right. move it to the next paddock, you push that button in, it resets it. And so that's good for feed more. budgeting, isn't it? Because you good. can actually get an idea of what's in the paddock. Yep. And you can you, see how yeah. many, what you think, you, how, how many long days you've got left of grazing in that paddock. Yep. You can book your trucks forward. Yep. That you don't have to worry about taking the stock to the cattle, yard, uh, cattle yards and knocking them around. Because everyone knows when you take cattle to the cattle yards, they definitely lose weight. Right, I think this is in here. This is pretty much the machine itself. This is the brains of the operation. This is the brains here. operation. We have the solar panel, which charges the battery down the bottom there. Yep. Comes into the brains of the actual machine that sends all the data back. Okay, so this is what, what's combining the scales with, with the panel reader. Yep, and the panel reader is just here. Yep. So everything's protected. In here, there's a button. Yeah, at the moment when it's blue, you know it's active. Yep. To change a mob, all you do is hold it in, it goes orange, and it turns back to blue. You know you've reset the machine, and so that's all you've got to do when you move to another paddock. So if you change paddocks or you change mobs, press one button and it's all done. Yep. So it's very easy. Now, what has this meant for you? You've been using this for about six months collecting data. What yep. has it meant for you? Uh, the ease of management of not having to worry about running the cattle into the into the yards. Yep. Like we, I over the years we know we you lose anywhere up to twenty odd kilos by just running a mob through. So every time you run a mob through to the yards yep. to get a weight, yep. and you want to be precise, so you need to get weights. Yep. You're sacrificing twenty kilos a head. Yeah, pretty much. That's a hell of a lot of weight if you're aiming for a kilo a day. That's nearly half a month's production. Yeah. Look, it's um, and it. Different times of years it can can be worse, especially right. in the summer. Like it's just stressing the animals out. Yeah. Being able to record their weights in the paddock yep. is just ease of management and less labour, less time. Yeah. And the animals are all happy. And you've got a daily weight, which means better management, doesn't it? Correct. What's it meant in a drought for your feed budgeting? Well, for the feed budgeting, like at the moment we're on a stubble paddock. Yeah. Um, We've got a lot of the cattle off our pastures, even though it's not raining or anything, and we don't normally get rain at this time of year. So you're not going to have a high gain when you're on stubble? We're not going to have a high gain, but as as you can see on my phone here, this mob here, as of today, it's been in here with them for nearly a month. Yep. And they're doing 0.26, so 260 grams a day. So those cattle so are still, still gaining? They're still gaining on the stubble. And you know that, and I know that on a daily basis. Yep. And out of this mob, there's 65 in this mob and 59 of them have been across it. So it's it's right. giving me a very accurate data. So you don't need every single animal no, to go across never, it to know what your mob's doing. You're never going to get every single animal. You're always, it's no different to an animal in a feedlot or something like that. Yep. You're always going to have a shy feeder. Yeah, it's right. It's no different to this machine. Like, you're never going to have 100%. But you're still having more than 80% of your animals weighed daily. Correct and you know exactly what the mob's doing. So what would be your threshold? You're making 260 grams a day? Well, look, at, as long as these cattle at the moment are going forward, yep. we're pretty happy, like with the way the season is and this time of the year for us. Yeah, right. The big thing is with this machine going into the winter months and stuff where we're on grazing crops mm -hmm. and the cattle are doing the, from one to two kilos a day and we can yeah. monitor that. So if they're getting too hot, you can back them off, you can use if some tape, we, we whatever can, you need to we do. Can, we can use it to so predict when we were going to sell the cattle and book the trucks, book our feedlot spaces to unload the cattle without having to run them through the yards. Now, accurate predictions for your cattle weight, pretty critical so not, in terms of getting paid, aren't they? It is. Like if you break the feedlot, it's a, it's a big drop. So yep. you don't want to be breaking. Yep. Um, and if you're selling them too light, well, you're not getting your return. So we... We try and aim on the feedlots between the 450 to 500 kilos, somewhere mm -hmm. in there, mm -hmm. um, just depending what we've bought them in at. Yep. But at the same time, like we sent a mob to the feedlot not that long ago. There was 84 in the mob. The machine had been in with them. They were going three weeks later. Yep. We put the machine in, and after the first two weeks, 76 out of the 84 had been across it. Yeah, right. It gave me, it told me the average daily weight gain. Yeah. So I worked out that there's the top one, so it, it allowed you to project forward? Project forward. Yep. The top animal was going to bust the feedlot no matter what. Yep. But I thought just... There's always one factor. Just as a trial, we won't worry about touching them. Yep. We'll just sell them straight by using this machine yep. off their weights. And as those cattle leaving here, they were... They should have... They Leaving here, they were... So this machine was saying they were averaging 480 kilos. Right. With one animal is going to break the 500... Yep. Less it's 5%. So you're getting as close to but not over, yep. which meant that you get 
the most return? Yep. Yep? That's it. Okay. Um, we sent the cattle, and we work on 5% from here to go into the feedlot where we did. 5% drop. 5% drop. So, 480 average leaving here. Yep. What the, this machine said that morning. Yep. The cattle got over there. The, we got the data back from the feedlot. Yep. And... According to me, I would say the cattle should have weighed an average of 446 kilos. Yeah. They averaged 449 and one busted it, which is exactly, exactly what, what your prediction what was. Prediction was. Yep. Wow. So you were within 5%. Yeah. Only one busted. You knew it was going to anyway. That's it. Now, that brings us to our next bit. You get on your numbers all the time and consistently. This is certainly helping, but good practice helps as well. And you've got a tip for people about splitting mobs. Well, we know just with um, probably more so going into the kill operation and stuff. And we will, because we do the feedlot and then we also do the kill, but we've all, you'll always have those feedlot steers that break out. So we've got to run right. them through to kill no matter what. Yep. Um, but we do try and probably put around 600 in through to kill every year yep. um, up to 1200 depending okay. on what year it is and how it's going um, and we've noticed especially with this machine being able to not bring the cattle into the yards and muck around with them and stuff it is it's well known that if you start playing around with cattle too early or too close to them being killed yep you you affect the whole herd and stress levels on the animals and they can become either dark cutters full out of msa grading and there goes your profit well and truly yeah all of a sudden your dollar per kilo goes dollar per right kilo down. goes right down so you had some interesting things to tell me about splitting the mob in the yards if you need to what's your ideal timing there's a sweet spot that you avoid and you before or after that's okay so if we're like we do if we're weighing off this machine and haven't bought the cattle in the yards and we've got yeah say two mob two truckloads yep um so, so let's say just for numbers 120 steers we'll put 60 on a b double yep we'll instead of running them in the yards and worrying about them mm -hmm. we'll bring them in the day they go okay so you split the day of going yep right yep or you split them at least three to four weeks earlier okay. but then you're running them in the yards and you're affecting the animals. So if we can leave yeah. them on this machine and we know where their weights are and where the mob is and we can we can pretty much do a draft and work out how many yep. is going to go on that first truckload. Yep. We can book that load in, split the mob in the yards on the day they go. Yep. Haven't haven't disrupted the mobs, haven't split them. They're calm. They're, They're not calm. going to cut dark. Say they go down to Melbourne on the truck and kill down there, grade their MSA. Yep. The other 60 we'll put back in the paddock. Yep. And we won't touch them for another at least three weeks minimum. Okay, so people that are splitting their mobs, say, two weeks before the truck arrives, they're affecting their MSA grading through stress because it's in the period of four weeks prior or on the day that those animals are going to get stressed by being split. Yep. And it's going to compound by being put on a truck and sent to market. Yeah. Yeah, right. So if people are going to split their mob a month before or on the day, yep. and if you've got technology in your paddock that lets you weigh in the paddock, you already know which animals are in which mob, so yep. you can split on the day easily, save on labour, save on stress for the animal, and increase your profitability in return. That's right. Would you ever go back to not using this? No, look, I've um, I'd, I've got another one on order, so... Yeah, yeah right. We've got two farms, so yep. um, one definitely isn't enough yes. for us. Um, we've got another one coming, and yep. yeah, that we'll have it down at the other farm, and look down the track who knows we could even go more like it's being able to keep the cattle out of the yards and in the paddock and going forward the whole time that's the key well mate you are a master class in keeping tight margins in a harsh climate and using technology effectively thank you very much for having us out no here worries, mate Tim. thank you and if you know someone that can improve their cattle management or get their numbers right, make sure you send them this video. And in the meantime, if you don't want to miss out on tips, techniques, and technology, hit that subscribe button because there's a new one every week. And if you don't hit the subscribe, you're going to miss out.